Hello and welcome to another edition of MHQ's Foundation 101 webcast, where today we do the third and final installment of our mini series, Foundation and Digital Assets. And uh, in an attempt not to make a complete fool of myself, I have a guest today, an external to MHQ guest, Gilson Costa. Gilson, good morning. Morning, Jan. And Gilson is the managing partner of BAF, which stands for Virtual Assets Forensic Compliance, and he plays a fundamental role in this ecosystem uh, around structuring digital assets and investing in them. And with him, we are going to shine a light on uh, the third aspects of investment into digital asset, which is the do's and don'ts of crypto. So, Jilsan, uh, without further ado, uh, the question to you, do's and don'ts, uh, what's the advisor's, yours, perspective with respect to getting into crypto? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, to jump to that. So I would say this is a relatively new field and very fast moving. There are different challenges that people face when they're trying to get exposure to cryptocurrency markets. But I would say that three rules that I always mention to my clients within the first hour of meeting and so on, that will define a lot of ways if they're going to have a positive or a negative experience in crypto. So I want to have a positive experience in crypto. So uh, what are the rules uh, that you just mentioned that I should be following? Can you elaborate a little bit on this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the first one I would say is that don't look for quick bucks. So the people that are trading crypto or any other action, as a matter of the fact, have a different skill and a different motive than investors. So most of us are not going to be able to time any market and we'll get hurt in the process, basically. It's best to leave the trading, the trading side, social media, feeds and YouTube channels to those people that are dedicated to this. And those are part of that kind of profit motive, which is obviously different from investors. Yep. That would be the first one. Second one will be prioritize security and safety. These yep. are key in visual assets. The visual assets are vulnerable to digital and physical attacks during the lifetime or during any transfer process. So ensuring proper storage and security of a virtual asset, as well as methods for storing and assessing the associated private keys, is necessary to protect your investment and your beneficiary ability to assess that. Long-term solutions usually non-custodial or custodial, like cold storage, are the best method for crypto storing over the long term. Yep. And then finally, I'm going to talk about education. Again, because this is such fast moving and changing at all times, education is important and is the best way to invest and make sure their investment is current and safe. And to help others invest in, in new technology infrastructure, it's important that as an advisor perspective that you understand it. Once you better understand how cryptocurrency work, and then you are better equipped to talk to your investors and advise them how they can do it. Um, everyone is going to have a different risk tolerance mm -hmm. and uh, they have different goals, they have different lifestyles. So it's important that you always keep getting educated because you, know, you can't keep up with how fast this technology and this space moves. So continuous education is key. And I'm glad that you uh, underlined the fact of uh, safekeeping and custody, which is something that we stressed uh, at, at all, all times uh, in this mini series, uh, whether from the uh, foundation standpoint, the council member standpoint, this is absolute key. Uh, if you are a very cautious investor, how can you still get exposure to crypto despite uh, all this volatility that you mentioned? Uh, it's all about risk, manage your risk, and you have different options. You could, as an example, invest in directly into companies that hold crypto, uh, crypto infrastructure companies that have a stake crypto, say, as an example, Coinbase is publicly traded, or crypto mm -hmm. ETFs. If you want to have, on the other hand, direct exposure, but are still cautious, then invest may perhaps directly into a stable coin. This is normally a digital currency that is back to a stable reserve, like a US dollar or, or gold. And stable coins are there to actually, and are designed to volatility relatively to unpack cryptocurrencies like, say, Bitcoin. 
Okay, you mentioned uh, volatility uh, still being an issue in crypto markets, irrespective of the underlying uh, crypto assets so we are looking at. So could you, stablecoin that you just mentioned, uh, from an investor perspective, uh, be the way to deal with uh, this volatility? It's definitely one way. Uh, stablecoins, you could actually say, are the cryptocurrency market's way of dealing with volatility. So, uh, like I said, again, the stable coins are cryptocurrency, they hold their value, again, back to a fiat asset like the US mm-hmm. dollar, as an example. And they act a way, you could use them to act a way of entering and exiting the market position on a more volatile asset, say like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Yep. Another way that you can also uh, fight or, 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 or um, leverage your risk will be staking and lending. They're also a solution. So yep. staking is when you lock up your assets to earn a return on investment on the amount you've staked to the network. And, and lending is similar. A step you can require the centralized third party to facilitate where staking is done in a decentralized fashion. Um, so in, in lending, the company uses the money, you loan them to whatever purpose they'll see fit. Uh, but this is our, um, I would say, three ways, stable coins, staking and lending, that you can manage that volatility that it's very, very a big part of of cryptocurrency markets. You mentioned earlier uh, the continuous education and uh, keeping the pulse on the industry. And of course, uh, retaining advisors such as you and your firm uh, helps people navigate these uh, waters. Uh, From an advisor perspective, what should people watch for in the 2022 crypto world? I would say, um, technology. Uh, there's a lot of crypto technology there. A lot of stuff is coming in the financial space to focus on crypto, and there's been a massive shift to it. There's a lot of people doing a lot of really good things, or a lot of smart people getting involved in the space. That would be one thing. So keep mm-hmm. an eye for that. Two would be the public sentiment is shifting. So the exponential shift in talent and acceptance for digital assets is unbelievable. So you'll start to become even more a real thing if it's not already. So basically, if you don't embrace crypto, it might become in the future a real threat to your business. And then finally, because everybody's talking about it, I'll say the metaverse. You got to have an eye on the metaverse, which is basically versions of artificial intelligence, blockchain and virtual reality technology, creating a new medium for human interaction and connectivity. So what they call it now the Web 3.0. In the advance of blockchain technology is really the start of tokenization of everything towards much more efficient mechanisms, for tracking the ownership of various assets, whether digital, physical. And these tokens can really be applied to just about anything as we are seeing now in FTs. And, and to give you an example, you also have now a big corporation joining. You, as an example, say JP Morgan just opened a store in the metaverse. So this will show you the shift that is happening in the metaverse and how it's important to keep an eye or even at some stage, get some sort of exposure to it. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much for your input, Gilson. As I mentioned previously, for anyone that uh, is already an actor uh, in the field, but that wants to structure, optimize uh, his wallet uh, uh, or digital assets, someone that wants to enter it, uh, people like Gilson play a fundamental role because they would uh, first advise people on on what they uh, ought to do if they are new to the field, but also they would undertake uh, those forensic audit report of past wallets uh, so that they become uh, translated into standard financial jargon and pass the source of wealth test uh, that uh, many regulators or firms like us uh, would require to be able to structure these assets. So uh, I think we are going to have our hands full this year, Gilson. So uh, with this, uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we will post uh, your full details for those people that want to join you and your firm uh, going forward. And with this, uh, this is me out. Uh, for any questions, as usual, feel free to connect uh, directly to me or to uh, Kat Zagati, lead partner legacy at MHQ. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jan. Take care. Bye.